Welcome back to Analog Electronics. Today's lecture number 34 is going to be about unity gain bandwidth. So, this is what we were discussing in the last class, but uh, uh, we had started talking about it very briefly. Uh, the idea is that if you look back at the Bode plot, you have a system that is going to look like this. This is the open loop op amp. It is a two pole system, probably with a 0 that you have a right half plane 0 that you have cancelled out. So, you we do not bother about the 0 over here, right. Uh, you have got a pole P 1 and you have got another pole not P 1, we called it omega 1 is it? Omega 1 and you have got another pole omega 2 and in between you have this point omega naught and at this point the gain of the of the op amp at this frequency the gain of the op amp is 1 or 0 dB. So, this is called the unity gain bandwidth, the gain at which the amplifier has unity gain, the frequency, the bandwidth for which the amplifier has uh, gain more than unity. All right. Now, commonly used bandwidth uh, expressions are minus 3 dB bandwidth, okay. that is going to be over here. right and the other one is unity gain bandwidth. Now, there is something special about the unity gain bandwidth, something very special and we are soon going to see what it is. For now, you have to realize that if you do not worry about omega 2, then the relationship between omega 1 and omega 0 is, what is the relationship between omega 1 and omega 0? Yeah, what is the relationship? At omega 1 the gain was A naught, right and then the gain started dropping at 20 dB per decade. 20 dB per decade means if if the if the uh, frequency increases 10 times then the gain decreases 10 times if the frequency increases x times then the gain is going to decrease x times okay at omega 0 the gain has decreased a naught times the gain is now 1 so earlier gain was a naught at omega 1 at omega 0 the gain is 1 so, the gain has decreased x times which means that the frequency has increased the same a naught times. So, therefore, omega 1 omega 0 is approximately a 1 a naught times omega 1. Now, the system could have been expressed as a naught divided by 1 plus s by omega 1, if you do not worry about omega 2, omega 2 is much higher than everything else. Remember this is you know logarithmic scale, so a little bit here and there is a large leap. If this was your overall approximate transfer function, then you could say that omega 1 is a very small frequency. Right. Omega 1 is usually a small frequency and uh, for all reasonably large frequencies like omega naught and so on, right, all these reasonably large frequencies s by omega 1, s is where you are going to plug in the frequency, j times the frequency is x. So, s by omega 1 is going to be significantly larger than 1 at those frequencies. And in such a scenario, you can start ignoring the 1. 
and you can approximate this as a naught times omega 1 by s and a naught by times omega 1 is nothing but ok. So, this is uh, the overall setup all right. So, the entire system can be simplified by virtue of the fact that the first pole is a very low frequency. So, whenever you are talking about any frequency that frequency is going to be typically larger than the first pole because the first pole is a very low frequency few hundred hertz tens of hertz. If you buy a commercial op amp off the shelf it is a few hertz omega 1 is just a few hertz 5 hertz 10 hertz something like that. Okay. So, any reasonable frequency is going to be above omega 1 and therefore, the amplifier can be uh, expressed as nothing but omega naught by s where omega naught is the unity gain bandwidth. All right. Now, let us look at a few systems. One popular system your favorite amplifier op amp circuit is this one. Okay. And you know that the gain of this uh, system V in V out you know that nominally the gain of the system V out by V in is 1 plus R 2 by R 1 we know this for a fact. Now, the op amp is no longer our lovely op amp we are going to replace the op amp with its transfer function and the transfer function let us say the transfer function is A naught by 1 plus s by omega 1 right omega 2 is much larger. So, I am not going to worry about it. So, this is my amplifier all right. Now, what is the voltage over here let us analyze we need to find out the relationship between V in and V out given that the op amp does not have infinite gain anymore it has a gain which is this one right it is a function of frequency and it has limited gain. So, let us try to analyze the system we have V out over here the voltage over here is V out into R 1 by R 1 plus R 2. Fine resistive division potentiometric division. So, the voltage difference between these two is V in minus this quantity and that is going to be amplified by this factor and you are going to get V out. So, therefore, you can write an expression V out is equal to A naught by 1 plus S by omega 1 times V in minus V out times R 1 by R 1 plus R 2. fine. Now, just pause over here a little bit I am going to call the nominal gain of the amplifier of this circuit the nominal gain was 1 plus R 2 by R 1 remember. So, I am just going to call that as A okay, that is the nominal gain of this circuit that is the gain that you desired right. Let us call that A what is 1 by A right. So, far so good this makes sense because you are comparing V in with V out divided by A. If V out divided by A is equal to V in right then only it works these two have to be equal. So, therefore, these two are this one has to be equal to V out divided by A. So, that the error is 0. Okay. 
Now, let us uh, solve, we have to solve for v out by v in. So, we will take all the v out related terms on one side and we are going to keep all the v in related terms on the other side. and this is what we get. So, I have gathered collected all the v out terms on one side, v in terms on the other side and now we are only interested in v out by v in Okay. And your natural instinct is going to be to multiply numerator and denominator by 1 plus s by omega 1. Okay. You want to simplify further? I think so. I think a little bit more can be done. We can multiply numerator and denominator by A, uh, not, even, uh, not even that. We can uh, divide numerator and denominator by A naught. No, uh, not even that. You see, the way we work is that the uh, denominator should look like 1 plus s times something. Okay. That was our template. So, I am sorry, we should not deviate from the template. So, what we have got is a naught by 1 plus a naught by a plus s by omega 1, right. This is what we have got. The denominator should look like 1 plus s times something. So, therefore, we should divide numerator and denominator by this factor. Is this okay? Now, let us think about it for a little bit. A naught is a large quantity, 10,000. Okay. A is a relatively small quantity. You are going to make a limited gain amplifier circuit over here. right? You are going to make a gain of 10, gain of 15, something, some limited number. It is not going to be certainly not going to be more than the op amp gain. It cannot be more than the op amp gain. It is going to be significantly lesser than the op amp gain such that the circuit works. right? So, A is substantially smaller than A naught. A naught by A is going to be a substantially large number. In which case 1 plus A naught by A is more or less equal to a naught by a. So, you can 
stop worrying about this one portion, right. You can stop worrying about this one portion. You see in engineering, it is important to stop worrying about the small things. You look at the big picture over here, okay. This is not maths, this is engineering. So, then we can simplify a little bit further and what happens A naught and A naught cancel out very politely and all you get is A divided by 1 plus S by omega 1 A naught. What is omega 1 times A naught? Omega 1 times A naught is the unity gain bandwidth. Omega naught by A. All right. So, this is what we have. What does this mean? This means that at DC at 0 frequency, this S term is irrelevant at 0 frequency and all that you are left with is A at DC. You are trying to make an amplifier of gain A, you are left with a gain A at DC, perfect, right. Of course, the gain was not exactly A, it was a naught by 1 plus A naught by A, which I have simplified to A by assuming that A naught is much, much, much larger than A. And unless you make this assumption, you would not get that perfect gain of A that you wanted. So, A certainly has to be much, much, much smaller than A naught for this to work. Okay. If you, if you have not chosen A to be much smaller than A naught, then I am sorry, your circuit is not going to give you the desired performance, right. Now, this is the performance at DC. Okay. What is the bandwidth? What is the 3 dB bandwidth of the system? The 3 dB bandwidth of the system is not related to omega 1 it is related to omega naught, the unity gain bandwidth. It is the unity gain bandwidth divided by A. So, let us go back a little bit. I had my system Okay, this was my unity gain bandwidth. I start from a free, uh, DC gain A naught. Actually, the value of A naught is irrelevant, right? You could have started anywhere on this curve. Now, you are saying that I make this beautiful circuit, all right, and this circuit has a nominal gain of A at DC. Let us put A over here. A has got to be smaller, substantially smaller than A naught. And guess what? The 3 dB bandwidth of the system is omega naught by A. Okay. It is right at this corner. How do you know that it is at the corner? Because if I decrease the frequency by omega naught, the gain increases by A. Okay. So, at the frequency omega naught by A, the gain is A. So, it is right at this corner. All right. Any other system, suppose instead of A, you design your circuit to have a gain of A 1. Suppose A 1 is this one. Okay. What is the bandwidth going to be? What is the characteristics going to look like? It is going to look like this. Right. They will have the same overlapping characteristics. Whatever system you design, it is going to have 
the same overlapping characteristics. Okay? And the overlap depends on the value of omega naught, the unity gain bandwidth. Suppose your A was equal to 1, maybe, right? A could be chosen to be 1. You could make your circuit to have a gain of 1. We have we know some utility of uh, having a gain of 1, right? It is useful. In that case, the system will just look like this and it will have a bandwidth, a 3 dB bandwidth of omega naught, all right? So, that is why this unity gain bandwidth is so important, right? Whatever system you are going to design, when you look at the 3 dB bandwidth of that system, eventually it is going to be related to the unity gain bandwidth of the base amp, the core amplifier, the core op amp that is being used inside that system. All right. Now, in our analysis, we ignored this 1 plus. As soon as you ignore the 1 plus, you can start calling it, calling the op amp as omega naught by s. So, when you have a lot of uh, op amps in the system, you can approximate all the op amps as omega naught by s and that will give you a quicker answer to the problem. Okay. Let us do one more. Let us do one more of your, your second favorite circuit was the inverting amplifier. Okay. And here we are going to choose R2 by R1. is equal to the gain. Okay. So, here the gain is minus a in this case. Fine. Now, unfortunately, the same result does not quite work. So, let us do it. Let us do it. We need to do it to appreciate that the same result does not quite work. It is going to be similar, but not exactly the same. And then we will generalize from there. Uh, what did we do last time? We said that the amplifier has a response that looks like this. Okay. So, we will start from this. And what is the voltage over here? The voltage over there is related to V out and V in. Okay. So, How did I do this so quickly? I did it by inspection with the help of superposition. So, forget the op amp over here. First, I assumed that V out is there, V in is ground, in which case it is a potential divider, right, of value R1 by R1 plus R2. In the next case, I thought I imagined that V in is there, V out is ground, in which case it is a potential divider again with R 2 by R 1 plus R 2. Okay, so, it is V out times R 1 by R 1 plus R 2 plus V in times R 2 by R 1 plus R 2. That is the voltage over here. This voltage minus of this voltage in fact, is the difference between plus and minus times the gain of the op amp is equal to V out. 
fine, so far so good. This is fine, but I want to write down R 2 by R 1 to be equal to A, all right. So, let us simplify a little bit. Okay, I just divided numerator and denominator by R 1 and here I am going to divide numerator and denominator by R 1. And then again you need to collect all the V out terms together, all the V in terms together. Okay. And then finally, you have to find out V out by V in. Okay, you see the maths is no longer the same as before, but anyway let us proceed. Uh, instinct would say that let us multiply numerator and denominator by A naught times 1 plus A. So, I am multiplying numerator and denominator by A naught times 1 plus A. Fine. So far, so good. Okay. Want to do a sanity check? Okay can do a sanity check, you just plug in s is equal to 0. If I plug in s is equal to 0, this disappears. So, the denominator becomes a naught plus 1 plus a and a naught is substantially larger than both 1 as well as a, which means this whole thing can be thrown out in which case you get a times a naught divided by a naught, which is just minus a. So, it works. The sanity check says that we are on the right track, we have not made a mistake while doing our calculations. So, this is always very important. Sometimes you should pause and check your answer, right, and there are easy ways to check your answer. All right. Next, what are we going to do? We need to make sure that the denominator is of the form 1 plus something. Okay, right now, the denominator is a naught plus 1 plus A, plus 1 plus A times S by omega 1, right. This is what the denominator is right now. We do not like it, right. We want to make it 1 plus S times something, okay. And what does that mean? That means numerator and denominator have to be divided by this factor. So, 
So let us do that. And this is what we have. All right. Now, once again, you can approximate a naught plus one plus a to be approximately a naught, assuming that a naught is much, much, much larger than both a as well as one. Okay. You do that, then these portions disappear. in which case this boils down to a times a naught by a naught is approximately a divided by 1 plus s by omega 1 times a naught is omega 1 times a naught is the unity gain bandwidth omega naught. Okay. And what does that mean? That means that my gain is approximately minus a which is perfect, but the bandwidth the 3 dB bandwidth is omega naught by 1 plus a. What happened here? So, if you do a Bode plot, You started from a naught at omega naught you had your unity gain frequency and then you are saying that let us build a system with a gain of a. Okay. So, you start building a system with a gain of a, but the bandwidth that we have is equivalent. to omega naught which is the unity gain bandwidth divided by 1 plus a. So, not exactly omega naught by a because omega naught by a would have been this corner frequency not quite right. Our corner frequency is that for which you start with a plus 1. Okay. So, this corner frequency is going to be used. So, it does not exactly overlap, it is almost there. Okay. Instead of dividing by a the bandwidth, you are dividing the bandwidth by a plus 1. So, it is a slightly smaller bandwidth. Where did a plus 1 come here? So, in our first circuit, the inverting the non inverting amplifier we got a nice gain of sorry a nice bandwidth of a times uh, smaller right in this circuit the bandwidth of the whole circuit the bandwidth of the op amp is the unity gain bandwidth of the op amp is omega naught the 3 db bandwidth of the op amp is omega 1 which is a tiny tiny frequency but the bandwidth, the 3 dB bandwidth of the whole circuit is something which is 
related to not related to omega 1 at all, it is related to the unity gain bandwidth omega naught, it is the gain of this circuit times smaller than omega naught. Okay. So, if you had chosen a gain of 5, then the bandwidth, the 3 dB bandwidth of the whole circuit would be 5 times smaller than the unity gain bandwidth. Okay. In fact, gain times the bandwidth is a constant, 5 times in uh, omega naught by 5 is omega naught gain times bandwidth happens to be a constant in this circuit. This inverting amplifier is slightly different, right. What did we get in this inverting amplifier? We got it to be slightly different. We got it as if, if the amplifier has a gain of A naught and a bandwidth of omega 1, then it has a a unity gain bandwidth of omega naught, which is A times omega 1, A naught times omega 1. Now, I plug this into a circuit to make a gain of A. The bandwidth of the circuit is going to be omega naught divided by 1 plus A. Now, where is this 1 plus A coming in from? Okay, that is where it is coming from, this 1 plus a. You see there is 1 plus a everywhere. It is not just a, it is 1 plus a. By the way, a is not a gigantic number. Okay. A can be a small number, a can be 1, a can be 2. So, 1 plus a cannot be approximated as a, but 1 plus a naught can be approximated as a naught. Okay, because a, a naught is always very large, it is 10,000, 100,000. Okay. So, this 1 plus a is coming right from here, right? it is coming from this ratios, these two ratios that we made. Right? In fact, 1 by 1 plus a is nothing but r 1 by r 1 plus r 2. How did we get R 1 by R 1 plus R 2? Right, the sum of these two resistors R 1 plus R 2 and this R 1. So, 1 by 1 plus A is called the feedback factor. Okay. In popular word, in, in the literature, this is called as the feedback factor. So, this is called as beta lot of people call it as beta defined as the feedback factor. And what does it mean? It means I take V out, what portion of V out is fed back? It is beta times V out that is fed back. All right. And in such a case, you could write this as minus a by 1 plus s by omega naught times 1 by 1 plus a. So, omega naught times beta. So, the bandwidth changes by the factor beta, whatever that factor is. Now, this happens to be general enough. If you look at the feedback factor in the first circuit, what happens? V out, what portion of V out is fed back? It is V out times R 1 by R 1 plus R 2. So, R 1 by R 1 plus R 2 is going to be called beta. So, in this case, beta is just 1 by A. Whereas, in the other circuit, beta is 1 by 1 plus a. Okay. So, in the non-inverting amplifier, the feedback factor is just 1 by a. In the inverting amplifier, the feedback factor is 1 by 1 plus a. 
all right. So, slight change. And if you say that the feedback factor is just 1 by A in the non inverting amplifier, then it follows right, it straight away follows that you know this bandwidth is just beta times omega naught, whatever beta is right. Earlier we were calling it omega naught by A. Now, I am calling it omega naught times beta, where beta is the feedback factor, all right. So, this is the logic, whatever your amplifier structure is, you have to figure out what is the feedback factor and feedback factor times the unity gain bandwidth will give you the overall bandwidth of that circuit, all right. So, with this, uh, we are going to. Uh, so now you understand why omega naught is so important, okay? And not this corner frequency. This corner frequency is of no value. This one has all the value. Omega naught has all the value. Okay. So given that we have completed our discussion on amplifiers. Uh, we have also completed our discussion on compensation, frequency response of the amplifiers, how to design the op amp. A uh, lot of times uh, 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 after this whole course, if you are asked draw an op amp, will you be able to draw an op amp? A lot of people end up not drawing op amps at all. Okay. So, I hope this course is not going to leave you in confusion about what does an op amp finally look like. So, an op amp is finally going to incorporate all these small elements that we have learnt. We have learnt it in bits and pieces. We started from the common source amplifier, right. So, then from the common source amplifier, we built up into a differential amplifier. So, the op amp should have a differential input stage because there are two inputs. So, you are going to have two inputs okay. and differential input stage means that at the source you need a tail current. Okay. You have also learnt about current sources. So, how does a tail current source look like? It is going to look like a MOSFET. Fine. Then, a lot of people say that let us place resistors over here. No, as soon as you place resistors, the gain of the op amp is going to become very limited, very, very limited. So, you do not want to place resistors at all, you want to place an active load. Okay. So, here comes, here starts the variation. This part is certain, this is absolutely there, you cannot avoid this part. right? If you say draw an op amp and you do not draw this part, then you are absolutely wrong. Okay. This has to be there. Then on top of this, you are going to put a load. What is the load going to look like? If you have an NMOS input, then the load is going to be PMOS. Okay, where these gate, what these, what these gates are doing is uh, 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 left for the future right now. Now, uh, for example, these gates to, could be hanging connected to some bias voltage. Right. It could be self biased, for example, this could have been arranged as a current mirror, right. all kinds of things could have been done with these gates. Let us not draw it right now. That there are some PMOSs to do the load is what is important. Now, if you are going to do a single ended op amp as opposed to a differential ended op amp, then you are going to take only one output 
as opposed to 2. Okay. A lot of people take two outputs and then in the second stage have another differential amplifier that is also perfect, that is also perfectly fine that will just give you larger common mode rejection ratio. So, it all this is all the engineering right, lot of these options are there. One option is that you take just one output from the first stage and create a second stage. Another option is that you take both the outputs from the first stage and make another differential amplifier as the second stage, right. Maybe this time you can have a PMOS differential amplifier, it all depends, right. You can have a PMOS differential amplifier, you can have an NMOS differential amplifier, you can take just one output and have just one common source structure, right. All these possibilities are known. Now, you build a second stage and then you take the output from the second stage. So, this is what the op amp should look like, right. So, I will just give you an example, let us forget about the differential, let us just make a second stage and for variety I make it a PMOS second stage with an NMOS active load. Okay, this is your output. How will you put the plus minus signs? Well, if this is the output, then this is, this will be minus, right? And that means this node has to be plus because there is one more inversion. Then after this, you have to compensate because now you have made a two stage op amp. So, you better compensate. right and then you need to have a biasing for this current source you also need to bias these two these two are also like current sources right so maybe you can mirror all of these together So, from one reference current, I mirror create the PMOS bias voltages, create the NMOS bias voltages and of course, you have to ratio all of these, right. So, so that this takes double the current as these. These are all the items. Then what else do you have to do? You have to make this reference current source. How will you make the reference current source? We had discussed constant GM biasing, right. So, all of these little, little things that we have studied all of these have to be put together into the op amp, right. And the op amp has to be designed to some specification, all right. Power, bandwidth, all of these are going to be part of your specification, all right. Now, any other uh, important things that you are forgetting over here? Sometimes you want uh, better current mirrors in which case you are going to make cascode current mirrors, right. All of these little things that we have studied, they are all going to be put together in this overall design of the op amp. So, with this we are going to conclude the study of the op amps, right. And uh, we are going to move to the next topic in the next lecture. We are going to start talking about power amplifiers and we are also going to start talking about voltage regulators, okay. So, thank you very much, um, we will meet in the next class.